everyone! So today's video is going to be oddity related. This is actually based on a question that I got from someone in the comments a few years ago now and I meant to make this video quite a long time ago but it was basically asking I'm new to vulture culture, I don't really know where to start but what are kind of the basic supplies that I need to get started with this hobby. I thought that that would also be a useful video to make for people because I think when you do first start in oddity collecting, or at least it was this way for me, I really had no idea what I was doing. I just knew that I liked bones and I wanted to keep them, but I didn't really know how to do that and what kind of things I needed. So I think having a guide out there would probably be quite helpful. I hope so anyway. So I'm just going to be going through all the kind of basic supplies that you need for beginners in particular. The first thing that you need is probably the most obvious and that is disposable gloves. These are so important, they are an absolute staple. You cannot go around handling corpses without gloves. Not even just fresh dead animals but also like particularly greasy bones or stuff that's still got like bits of flesh or skin on it. Sometimes even feathers if they're looking a bit gross. All around general, if it isn't clean, you gotta have gloves. The next very obvious thing is plastic bags, or at least for me. I don't specifically go out to buy buy plastic bags, I don't know who buys them, but anyway. These are very useful for collecting fresh specimens in particular, and I guess even like larger bones and stuff. They're also good if you don't have gloves on hand, like one of my favourite things to do. It's kind of like picking up dog poo. <laughs> Turn the bag inside out and use it as a glove. You can grab the body without directly touching it. So plastic bags are a must. I always carry one on me at all times, no matter where I'm going because you never know when you're going to find a dead animal. <laughs> Next thing you need is jars. So many jars. <laughs> you can get these from so many different places. I mean, obviously, you can just get it from the food that you eat. Like, I eat a lot of salsa, so I have a shit ton of salsa jars. Got these, like, glass ones with the glass corks from various thrift stores. And you can even get little teeny tiny ones from like cheap stores like I know some people have a Dollar Tree we don't have that here but I'm sure you know what I mean we have like the reject shop and cheapest chips which is good for getting these the jars are super important they are good for keeping wet specimens in just make sure if you're using jars for wet specimens that it's like a tight fitting jar with a really good lid otherwise it either leaks or evaporates which isn't very good I have a few that tend to evaporate and I really need to change the jars because the lids are no good if you're like out and about looking for bones and you find some that are really small and delicate like bird bones or mouse bones or something you can put them in the jar rather than like a big plastic bag and that's really helpful because then they don't break. One other thing that jars are good for is for when you are macerating or degreasing bones like outside you need something to put those bones in to get clean. Just make sure if you're macerating with jars that you don't screw the lid on super tight because uh, your jars can explode from the buildup of the gases and them not being able to be released. So just be aware of that. Do not screw the lids on super tight if you're macerating. Something really important that you're going to need is lots of antibacterial soap and hand sanitizer. Even if you're using gloves, it's really still good measure to just Wash your hands afterwards or at least have like hand sanitizer on hand if you've just picked something up like in your bag or something outside and you know you're not getting home for a while or whatever. It's good measure because you never know there could be holes in the glove or in the bag or you know anything could happen and you don't even notice. Next super important thing if you're cleaning bones is you need some hydrogen peroxide. I usually use a 3% solution but you can use 6%. If it's 6% you can dilute it with water so you have half peroxide, half water. Don't dilute it any more than like half and half because then it doesn't work anymore. So this is really important for cleaning bones. Please don't use bleach. Please don't use bleach. Just sorry. I for some reason this doesn't seem to go through people's heads. They're like, oh, but can I just use bleach for this thing? Or what happens if I only use it for like an hour or something? I'm going to make a separate video on this, but please never, ever, 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 ever use bleach. Use peroxide. So much safer for your bones. Bleach is very corrosive. It'll eat away at the bones. Even if you don't see a negative effect straight away, you will later on, and it can just turn your bones to complete mush. They can come out damaged or cracked or broken or 
they can go soft and squishy, like it's really not worth the risk when you can just use peroxide when it works better, it's safer. Sometimes I have people ask me where I get this and for a while I didn't know where to get it when I first started. So I usually find this at chemists, I think in America they call those drug stores. I want to get the liquid one, not the powder one that's like for hair or whatever. I think you can also get this at supermarkets, like I've gotten it at Coles before. I think it might be in like the section where you you like caring for wounds or something, like where there's band-aids and stuff. The liquid one is important. Make sure you keep it out of the sun when you're using it, otherwise it deactivates and it doesn't work. So keep it like somewhere dark and cool while you're using it. So the next thing you're going to need is lots of plastic containers with lids. This one currently has a bunch of ring backings in it so ignore that. I got this from the thrift store the other day and they came in here but I thought that the container would be very useful. You can also use ones like this. But you're going to need this for, I guess you can use it for maceration but I use it for putting the peroxide and bones in when they're getting their final clean. If you're using this for peroxide and bones just make sure again that you do not have the lid like firmly tightly on there, it just needs to be kind of sitting on there. It's really good for when you're mummifying things as well, so you can do your layers of salt, put the specimen in and then have like the more layers of salt on top and you can kind of see the progress through there as well and then you can tell when you need to change the salt more easily. Another thing that you'll probably need, especially if you want to be doing any kind of wet preserving or even taxidermy. Ideally what you would want is some formalin but I do not have access to that and I don't know that many people that do. If you don't have that you can use isopropyl alcohol which I also don't have access to. So if you don't have that then you can use methylated spirits. So as far as I know the formalin is for really fixing the specimen and making sure it's totally preserved. I think you have it in there for a few days and then you change it out with I think ethanol alcohol but I can't remember. My kind of wet preserving technique is very very basic but it's also good for injecting the specimen with so that it's preserved on the inside as well like all of the deep tissues and stuff. Again that's something that I've never done before and I know that I should but I'm lazy, I know that I'm taking that risk with the more basic way that I do my wet preserving so I don't really mind. <laughs> but it's your personal preference, you can go to the effort to get formalin. I just use metho because that's all I have access to. I guess I can really only talk about metho because that's what I use. So it's also really good for taxidermy, like cleaning and preserving the skins before you make them out. And then also mummification, like I usually use it to soak the little animal part that I want to mummify in for like a couple of days usually just to clean it and preserve it and then I go in with the salt and stuff. And I also use it for cleaning feathers so it has a lot of really good uses and I recommend it because it cleans it and preserves it. I know some people have trouble finding metho like I think in some countries it's bright purple so people don't drink it and luckily ours is clear. Yeah but I just get it from like the supermarket or the cheap store like it's pretty easy to find here and it's really cheap yeah, but it all really depends on what country you're in what kind of restrictions there are and stuff around that but I'm sure you can find one of the three where you are hopefully. So the next thing that you need I don't have on hand at the moment because I haven't been doing anything related to this in a while that is some small blades. I think you can usually get them in a kit from the cheap store. I always get them from Cheapest Chips. They've got the little handles and you can remove the blade and change it with a different one depending on the task. They're really good for like small scale taxidermy projects and removing like parts of animals that you want to keep or mummify or whatever. They can also be helpful in the removal of like little leftover bits of flesh on bones but just obviously be careful it's a sharp object in your hand is right near it and everything. You also want to be careful of things like bone dust coming off if you're using it because you don't want to breathe in bone dust because uh, it can make you really sick. Next thing that you're going to need is tweezers. Again these are good for removing little bits of flesh and skin and whatever's left over on the bone that needs to go. Also good for picking up like really tiny bones of really fiddly things like when I'm doing say like really small bird skeletons or rodent skeletons and I'm re-articulating them. Sometimes use tweezers to pick up the bones because because my fingers are just too big for them, they just slide all around the place and I can't actually pick them up, but tweezers help a lot with that. And they're also good for picking up really delicate things as well, like bugs and again tiny bones that 
you could accidentally break by picking up with your fingers so I really recommend getting some of these. The next thing that's going to be really useful to you is a toothbrush. I just have a new one because it was free but this is really important for removing dirt that could be on your bones or like even just a bit of flesh that's on there sometimes just scrubbing it with a toothbrush helps to get it off. It's for any other residues that might be on your bones that need to go so these are definitely a must. Next super important thing that you're going to need if you're cleaning bones is dish detergent. This is really good for degreasing your bones so that they're not yellow and gross anymore and they're completely clean like from the inside out. People do often use harsher chemicals than this like they use ammonia or laundry powder but I really don't recommend them because they can be really damaging to the bones and things like ammonia are also dangerous for us. Obviously some of these other chemicals are as well, but I think if you can go the safe option and it works, then do it. Dish detergent, for example, works amazingly for degreasing bones for me, and it's safer for me to use than ammonia, so this is super important, super helpful, and it doesn't matter what brand you get or anything, as long as it works, that's all that matters. This is something else that I don't currently have on hand, but buckets are really helpful. They're really good for cleaning larger bones and specimens, like say if you've got a sheep skull or something that's not exactly going to fit in a jar, so putting it in a bucket definitely helps, like you're doing a larger skeleton or something. Also you can use it for if you want to, sorry there's a fly, <laughs> if you want to bury something that's kind of larger because obviously it smells, you don't want to macerate something that's really big because so it's going to be disgusting and you don't want to lose the bones in the soil or forget where you've buried it or whatever in the garden. You can bury it in a bucket so you just put it in the bucket and cover it in dirt and that is really useful. I actually did that for my cat who passed away a few years ago and so I've been able to take her with me like when we've moved house and stuff because she's like safe in the bucket. Next thing you're going to need is glue. This is really useful for if you need to reconstruct like a shadow or broken skull or putting skeletons together or just little bits and pieces whatever it is glue can be very very helpful I used to use a lot of Tarzan's grip glue but I stopped using it because it has really terrible chemicals in it that are awful for your health it's very stinky and it's really expensive so it is a good glue for bones but I don't really use it anymore. You can also use E6000. I've not used this on bones before but I know other people that have but I don't really do it often again because I worry about the fumes which is a bit ironic because the glue I currently use which is just craft glue this has fumes as well and I don't think it'd be very good to be breathing this in a lot either but I do think that the fumes for this are not as like long-standing and unbearable as the Tarzan's grip and the E6000 so that is why I now use craft glue <laughs> and it seems to work better as well I don't know why but it does like I just recently articulated two skeletons with that glue and they're stronger than any of the other skeletons that I've put together I've been spending so much money on this expensive glue and craft glue works better what? the next thing I don't know where it is I have some somewhere but I haven't needed to use them in ages so they're not here right now. Dust masks can be really important. So they can be good if you are doing a particularly stinky task like you're changing out lots of maceration jars or digging graves or using stinky glue and it's also good if you're doing anything that causes any kind of abrasion to the bones. For example I sometimes draw on bones. The pen that I use kind of scratches at it a bit so some bone dust kind of comes off and Bone dust is not something that you want to breathe in ever because it is too heavy to breathe back out again so if you keep breathing in bone dust it's just going to sit in your lungs and it can actually cause some really scary diseases like there's one called white lung which is basically another version of black lung that I think coal miners used to get. It sounds extremely unpleasant and I'm sure there's other things that you can get from it as well. So ideally you'd actually want to get something better than just a dust mask. I just use that because I only get like a tiny tiny bit of bone dust from drawing on the bones. I'm not like carving them or anything which would cause a lot of bone dust so kind of depends on what you're doing as well. Another thing that I know I have somewhere but I don't know where it is. I looked everywhere last night. I don't know where it is but safety goggles or safety glasses even. I do not hear people in vulture culture talking about this enough and I only recently realized how important it is but if you're doing stuff with like chemicals or anything that has any sort of risk of splashing in your face that you don't want in your face 
I highly recommend wearing safety glasses, like for example, peroxide. If you get that in your eyes, you can go blind, which is scary. I know I don't want to go blind, so from now on when I use peroxide, I always have some kind of glasses covering my eyes. I imagine the same thing would go for if you're using like isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirits or anything. I don't think that's something that you would want splashed in your eyes, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, I never hear anyone talking about this, so I thought that that should definitely be thrown in because I certainly never used to think about it, but then when I realised, I was like, shit, I've been doing this for so many years and never had eye protection and something could have happened so many times, like... That's a bit scary. It's definitely important. Eye protection. Do it. And the last one is lots and lots of salt or borax. I meant to take the salt out of the kitchen to show you, but obviously we all know what salt looks like. This is really just important for mummifying and drying specimens and also for like taxidermy and drying skins and stuff, just anything like that. But if you're not really working with skins or mummified stuff, then I guess you don't really need it. So those are all of the basic supplies that you need for oddity collecting in vulture culture. At least these are the ones that have been useful to me. I'm sure that I've probably left something important out, so if you're a fellow vulture culture enthusiast or oddity or bone collector, please let me know if I've missed anything and put it in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope this video was helpful to you or informative in some way. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.